All right, well, it's that time of the year where you want to uh, save a lot of money. You're going to want to purge out your own lawn sprinkler system, uh, get all the water out so it can't freeze in the wintertime and damage your equipment. So I'm going to go over how you can winterize your lawn sprinkler system. Uh, a couple th tools that you're going to need for the job, just to go over those. Uh, safety first, you're going to want some eye protection, so safety glasses, your earplugs. Uh, then, uh, if your backflow preventer is in your crawl space, you're going to need a flashlight, obviously. Uh, we're also going to need a wrench here to screw in our air pressure hose and a screwdriver. And of course, we're going to need a air compressor. Uh, what I did was bought, I bought a used air compressor off Craigslist for about 100 bucks. I uh, was able to negotiate them down. So this is a 25 gallon. Uh, I've done a lot of research and you don't really want to go less than 20 gallon capacity or your compressor is going to be running the whole time and it's going to take you several hours to finish. Uh, so the other thing you're going to want for your uh, stata, the other thing you're going to want is we've got our air hose here and Believe it or not, this is one of the longest things of the whole process. You're going to have to fight a find a right combination of adapters and parts, uh, so this will screw right into your backflow uh, preventer. So I was able to find that assembly. I added a little valve uh, to help. It was really kind of unnecessary uh, because the air compressor has got a pressure regulator on it. Uh, but anyways, this was kind of the key to the whole thing for me. Uh, so. Let me just bring the camera up closer here and you can see what you're going to be doing is just hooking this piece up into your backflow preventer to purge all the air out and you can see here on our air compressor uh, if you're not familiar with these uh, this gauge right here is the, the actual tank pressure and over here is the actual regulated pressure and this is your valve to basically control the pressure regulator now you don't want to send more than about 60 PSI through your lawn sprinkler system or you will cause damage. So make sure you set this to not be above 60 PSI. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just open up the crawl space. We're going to go underneath and I'm going to show you how you're going to hook the hose up. Alright, I've crawled under my house uh, to show you the next part of how this is supposed to work. So what you're going to do, this valve right here over here is where the main water line comes in. So I've gone ahead and closed this valve. So downstream from here is all the lawn sprinklers. So you can see this is our black flow preventer here. These are the two isolation ports. So I've closed both of these. Now at this point, what you're going to do to hook up your compressor line is what I had to do was actually use a wrench here uh, to remove this and then screw this down uh, into the, this is the discharge side, you can see the arrow right here, of the backflow preventer. So I've gone ahead and removed this, screwed this down into it. Now before you do that, if you can see these valves here, they're little uh, 45 degree turn valves. You need to use your uh, flathead screwdriver to, these are basically in the horizontal, you need to turn them 45 degrees to let the pressure off the system. Now we're isolated from the system here because we've got this valve closed. So there's water all in this part of the system and there's water all in this part of the system. So what we've done is we've hooked up our air compressor, we've removed this, we've hooked up our compressor line, then we're going to go ahead and open this valve and that's going to pressurize this portion of the system. Then what we're going to do after that is open up this valve. It's, this is just the quarter turn valve. We're going to open this valve. That's going to put pressure from the air compressor to the sprinkler system. Then we're going to go to our control box and cycle through each of the zones. Uh, so it's very important. You look for the arrow on your backflow preventer and you go into the discharge side. Uh, your inlet side is going to be over on this side where your main water comes in. Now after we've gone through each of the zones, all this piping should be completely clear. There's still going to be water from here back to here. So leaving this valve closed, 
what we're going to do is open this valve here. So right now these are closed. These are perpendicular to the pipe. If they're open, they're going to be parallel or in line with the pipe. This is our drain here. So this is where our water pitcher is going to come in handy. Uh, you're going to, we're going to use the wrench to basically just open this drain cap, catch all the water with our pitcher, and then we can throw that out. Once we're done, we're going to tighten back on the drain cap. And at that point, we're going to screw back in this little guy here, and we're done. So a, w a way to check to make sure we're all the way done is the drain cap's on, our main water line valve's closed, we've drained the system, our inlet to the backflow preventer's closed, our outlet to the backflow preventer's closed, and we're going to leave each of these pressure relief valves up here uh, at 45 degrees this way so that they're open. So that should prevent this entire system from freezing up. Uh, if you live in a really cold climate, you can also wrap this with insulation, any type of cloth, or anything that's going to keep this warm from freezing. But we've got just about all the water out. All right, now that you've got the air compressor hooked up to the discharge side of your backflow preventer, uh, and you've got your pressure in your tank built up, you've got it tied in, you're ready to go, uh, you can do one of two things. You can go to your solenoid valves in the back and open those manually. Uh, if you're an expert and you know what you're doing, that's easier. I like to just come over to the control box. So what you're going to do is just go to run, uh, and you're going to go through your program here, and go to each of your zones and just start each one until you get the water all the way out. Uh, you generally want to start with the farthest away zone, uh, but because you're going to be going through each zone at least twice, that's not really a big deal. Alright, I've actually already blown out my system, uh, but what you're going to see is when you first tie into whatever zone you're going to, your heads are going to pop up and you're going to see all the water getting pushed out. Uh, then after a while, it's going to turn to mist. Uh, you want to keep on blowing it out until basically all the mist is gone and you first start hear it starting to whistle. Uh, then that means you're done if all the mist has come out. Now you want to make sure if you approach the head any point during that time, you've got your safety glasses on because any random stuff in the lines could shit out uh, into your eyes and we don't want that. Uh, so, and you also want to make sure you don't want pressure too long. Uh, after the mist is finished because it'll heat up your sprinkler pipes and it can cause some issues. Uh, so once you've gone through each of your zones and pushed the water out, you've done that once, you want to go back again and start all over again and do it a second time because there'll be some residual water in the lines that you didn't get out the first time. Okay, thanks for joining me on how to winterize your lawn sprinkler system. Uh, just a couple of tips remember. Uh, safety first, make sure you're wearing your earplugs while the compressor's running, and you've got your safety glasses on if you're going to approach any of the sprinkler heads. Uh, we don't want anything flying up into your eyes. Uh, the next thing to remember is make sure you've got the right connections uh, set up to go into your backflow preventer. Uh, that was kind of a pain in the butt for me to find the right combination of stuff, so anything you can do ahead of time to save yourself time there. Uh, find out exactly what size adapters you're going to need will help you out. Uh, again, you want to make sure you've got at least a 20 gallon air compressor. I've got a 25 gallon here. It worked fine. Uh, there's really no need to buy one new. I found this off Craigslist for about 100 bucks. Uh, so anything between 100 and 150 you should find if you're in a large area uh, should give you what you need. Uh, the next thing to remember, make sure you don't go above 60 PSI. Uh, you can damage your equipment. Uh, we don't want that, so make sure you're setting your pressure regulator uh, so that you don't get above 60 PSI. Uh, the next thing to remember is for each of the zones, make sure you go through them at least twice. You push all the water out and turn, until it turns into mist and all the mist is gone. Uh, if you only do it once, there's still going to be water in there and you could get some damage. Uh, so make sure you go through each zone twice. Don't leave the air flowing through too long once all the mist is out and you hear it humming or you can heat up the pipes and also cause damage. Again, the last thing to remember is you want to make sure you drain your system under the house. I showed you how to do that. Uh, make sure you drain your system or you can cause damage. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll try my best to answer them. Uh, this is Derek Chamberlain for MoneyAhoy.com on how to winterize your yard sprinkler system.